Welcome to AI Machine Learning Workshop, the tutorial before your tutorial, part two, presented by Blackmagic AI. So check us out at blackmagicai.com. You can like us on Facebook. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel. So remember, this tutorial series is divided into two parts. Part A is where we talk about the theory and the concepts. And then part B, we actually do uh, practical uh, programming examples. So in the last video, part one, we covered an AI introduction, and we also covered uh, a machine learning introduction. In this part two video, we're gonna talk about the machine learning pipeline. All right, but just to recap what we did in part one, remember that AI is an umbrella term and it encompasses many topics in computer science, but the main goal is making computers and machines with cognitive abilities of humans. So these abilities include, but are not limited to, computer vision, natural language processing, reasoning, learning, robotics, etc. And we also explain that there are many approaches used to achieve these uh, AI goals, including machine learning, which is the approach covered in this video series. And more specifically, we'll cover uh, the supervised learning approach within machine learning that can be applied to classification and regression type problems. Uh, then we showed the difference between an algorithmic versus a machine learning approach applied to a reactive robot example. And in that example, we showed that in the traditional approach, it involved performing um, an analytical analysis of the problem to discover uh, algorithmic function. And that algorithmic function uh, described the relationship between the inputs and outputs. So we had to do an analytical analysis to discover that relationship. Whereas in machine learning, we create a, a learning model and we present it with the input and output data and then it learns on its own the relationship between the input and output data. So no analytical um, analysis was required. Now when might you want to do this? Well, that's when the relationship between the input and output data are too complex or not well understood enough for an analytical analysis. So this is the machine learning pipeline. Now, this diagram illustrates a high-level overview of the processes and stages needed to develop a machine learning solution. And more specifically, it shows the uh, tools available to accomplish the goals of each stage. And as we uh, go through this tutorial, try to recognize uh, which stage we are in within the machine learning pipeline. So we'll cover all of these stages in this tutorial. Each of these areas is a whole subject in itself that can be the focus for more in-depth study, but we'll just kind of overview them here. So let's start with our data streaming. Machine learning models require massive amounts of data. So how do we deal with these massive data sets? Well, you can't just use your um, hard drive on your uh, desktop or laptop computer. Uh, we need tools to help manage these massive amounts of data, which can be distributed across multiple data stores and multiple data centers, but we want them to appear as one data store to the user or the application. So in data streaming, we have some tools that can do that. Uh, there's Kafka, Cassandra, Google Cloud Storage, and HDFS. These tools address some of the concerns dealing with massive distributed data, such as redundancy and backups, High availability with uh, no single point of failure. It provides fault tolerance, latency, scalability, etc. And this data may come from anywhere. It could come from uh, databases, sensors, mobile devices, uh, cloud services, etc. And you can use tools like Kafka and Cassandra um, to deal with that. And these and the tools listed here also uh, deal with like streaming data. So if you have it streaming from like IoT devices or something like that. And this next stage deals with the users. And these include uh, development environment tools for data preparation and analysis. So remember, that first stage we uh, acquired our data, we are able to store it and access it. Now we need to do some kind of preparation and analysis on it. So here are a couple of tools. We have Jupyter Hub, Apache Zeppelin, and Spark. Um, we will be using uh, the Google um, Collaboratory for this tutorial, which which is a cloud Jupyter notebook that we can use access through our browser. So the next tool are frameworks and clusters. So frameworks help streamline the development process since programmers don't need to reinvent the wheel each time they develop a new application. So that's what these frameworks are for. And the hosting framework, um, these host the runtimes 
uh, in a distributed environment for these frameworks. So um, in this tutorial, we will be using TensorFlow, uh, but you can also use PyTorch um, and then the Google Kubernetes and DC uh, OS. These are distributed hosting environments for these uh, frameworks and tools. The next stage involves building the machine learning model. We have to build and train a model that's acceptable and satisfies the requirements of the application. So we'll be talking more about that in this tutorial. And last, we will cover model serving. So what is model serving? So once you develop your machine learning solution, you want to deploy it and expose it uh, for use by multiple clients. So you may have a cool machine learning model that does some kind of image um, detection, object detection or image recognition. And you could, maybe you created a desktop application or maybe you want them to access it through a browser or some other, or their mobile device or something like that. But in order for that to occur, you need to have it um, you need to serve that model so that clients can access it. Previous diagram, we gave a high level overview of the machine learning pipeline and the tools um, needed for each stage. In this diagram, we're actually showing you the uh, process that goes on in each stage in a little more detail. Well, let's start off with the data preparation. The data preparation step, our data can come from images, text, spreadsheets, databases, and streaming from uh, video and all types of other devices like IoT devices and things like that. So first we have to prepare that data. So that means we have to collect the data uh, and organize it and possibly format it or transform it, transform it into a format that is required for um, our feature extraction stage. In the feature extraction step, this is the role that the data scientists perform. And what they're trying to do is determine the features to use or features that are important by uh, doing some kind of analysis using statistics and other mathematical techniques. For example, if we're doing something like handwriting recognition, you want to know some kind of like um, invariant type features that describe each unique uh, handwriting, handwriting sample. So maybe you want to look at how far letters are spaced. Uh, maybe you want to look at like how big someone makes uh, loops or curves. These may be features important to that particular problem that can be used to identify and classify different types of uh, uh, handwritten signatures. And then there's the uh, data pipeline engineer who also prepares uh, labeling this uh, training data. Right, so once we uh, get the features that we think are important, it goes into this uh, machinery here. So each thing is represented as a gear. So that lets you know it's like kind of an iterative process of each one of these stages. So we take, we start the model training process by taking the features we think are important from our original data set. And then we split it into two different parts. We split it into data that we want to use for training our model and data we want to use for the test data. And the reason we want to do this is we want to prevent something um, called uh, overfitting the data. This is like kryptonite for machine learning models and can decrease the accuracy and the usability of the model you train. So the way we can uh, solve that problem is to split our data, like I said, into two different sets. So we might set aside like 80% of the data to train the model, and then the other 20% we'll use once the model's trained to test data to actually see if our model uh, fits the requirements of accuracy for our particular application. And once again, here's the model. So the model is presented with the training data, and then the next goal is the prediction. So once again, we'll, we're gonna take our test data and we're gonna get output. So the thing the predictions is the output from our model. Now there's two different paths once we get through there. So we can go back if our predictions are not, uh, do not meet the uh, requirements or accuracy of our application, we'll go back to our data preparation model and maybe there's uh, noise in our data, maybe there's duplicate data, maybe there's something in that data that needs to be cleaned up um, that will improve our uh, prediction accuracy. 
And then another path we can take is back to our feature extraction stage. In this one, maybe we picked features that aren't relevant to the type of problem we're solving. Um, so then we have to go back and find maybe some other things in the data that we can use as our features to uniquely identify, like um, classify or pre make predictions on our data. So this diagram illustrates how once a model is trained, we use it for the purpose of performing a classification or prediction on new unseen data in the wild or once it's deployed. So you can see we have our data here. Um, and once again, we've used supervised learning. So we have our data. We extract the features of the data. We present it to the machine learning uh, model that we trained. And depending on what type of uh, problem we're trying to solve, we can do some type of grouping or classification of the uh, input data, or we can do some kind of prediction uh, and annotate that data. And that concludes the part two of AI Workshop Machine Learning Tutorial before your tutorial. Uh, once again, you can go to blackmagicai.com, uh, like us on Facebook, and subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can get notifications uh, when the next video in this series is posted. Thank you for watching.